Hello, and welcome to Reading Through the Bible in a Year. I'm Eric. Linda. And we're reading in today, day 241, and we're reading Psalms chapter 126, 27, and 128. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, continuing on 23, it says 19, but we read to the end of the thought yesterday. So it's going to be 23 to 33. And so we're going to open in prayer, and then we're going to jump right in as it gets to read first tonight. All right. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you for this beautiful, sunshiny day. Um, we thank you for how you have blessed us in this day. And Lord, so we look to you when we have struggles. We look to you because you are our healer. You are our salvation. You are our strength. You are our hope. And so... We, the best thing for us to do is to look to you. And so, Lord, we recommend that to anybody who joins with us and to everybody who joins with us. Look to the Lord, and he will meet you in those situations. Thank you for your word, Lord, and we ask to bless it now to, to our hearts as we read it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excuse the apron, but we're canning peaches tonight. <laughs> and we did a bushel. Uh, and then the second bushel was um, what no, they it's call good quality. seconds or something they call yeah, it. Yeah, the second. And when we got them home, uh, all the red ones were up top, the red ones underneath are egg size, the green ones, not ripe, hard. So I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do with them. So we thought we'd we give them another them. day. Maybe they'll ripen up a bit if they don't rot. So, Anyhow, okay. let's go. Psalms 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. When it was said among the nations, then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore your for, uh, fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Psalms 127, a song of ascent of Solomon. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labors in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stands guard in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. That sounds like he's describing you. <laughs> and me and his are toiling for food to eat. Well, in vain when, it comes, rise up early, when it comes time to go to bed, I hit the hay. That's it. That's staying up late, toiling for food to eat. That's me tonight, Kenny. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are reward from him like arrows in the hands of a warrior. Our son is born of one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gates. That's a pleasant little song, but I'm a little worried about the losing sleep thing. God gives sleep to the one he loves. I don't know how many nights I've tossed and turned right away. Hmm. Well, maybe you always say you sleep better when I pray. When you pray me to sleep. You fall asleep while I'm praying. So. Yeah. We will do that more. Yeah. That way you will be blessed by it. Psalms 128. Yeah. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. There, see? You will eat the fruit of your labor. You're laboring. Yeah. I'm laboring. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus, is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem, and may you live to see your children's children. Peace be unto Israel. Well, it's really yeah. funny to compare a wife to a fruitful vine in his house. That's different, right? I'm not sure if I heard phone me at home. Well, it says, missing you, honey. I'm just thinking about how you were a fruitful vine in my house. I'd say, what? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, Corinthians. I think fruitful vine means many children. 
well, vines wrap themselves around things, so maybe, ah! <laughs> maybe I'm a huggy person, <laughs> and we have lots of babies. <laughs> yeah, okay. Interesting concept. Anyways, First Corinthians 10, we're starting at 23, I think, because we read, yeah. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Eat anything still sold in the meat market without raising questions of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. If someone unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go eat whatever is put before you without raising questions of conscience. But if anyone says to you, this has been offered to sacrifice, then do not eat it, both for your sake and for the man who told you, and for the conscience sake. The other man's conscience, I mean, not yours. For why should my freedom be judged by another man's conscience? First I don't get to read much. Short reading tonight. Hey, it's only six minutes. We get to If I it. take part in the meal with thanks, uh, thankfulness, why am I denounced? Because of something I think. I thank God for. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jew, Greek, or the church of God, even as I try to please everybody in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Follow my examples as I follow example of Christ. Very good reading. I had an email last winter from a friend who talked about a certain meat market that was quite popular in Canada and in the United States. And it's one you have to get a membership to be a, well, it's not a meat market, it's a big store. And it sells lots of stuff, but one big part of that store is its grocery store and meat market and bakery. And it wouldn't be. No, I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm not good at it. I'm bad advertising here. But anyways, you have to get a membership to go there, so that's a hint. But anyways, they said in this email that the meat that is um, sold through that store is supplied by a religious organization who uh, sacrifices the meat or, or dedicates the meat or whatever to idols. And uh, they suggest that we not purchase meat from that store anymore because we would be eating food uh, sacrificed to idols. So I thought, hmm, do I, like it says here, if they tell you it's sacrificed to idols, don't eat it anymore. And they went on to say in this email that lots of the meat that's being purchased now in various places is meat that's been uh, produced at these packing houses where the people are of a certain religion where they sacrifice it to idols or offer it to someone other to God, other than God. So it, it kind of almost makes you wonder when you read this scripture, you know. Um, so I kind of like deleted the thing um, I mean, you go to a restaurant, you don't know what they did to the meat. They could have dropped it on the floor. Probably, you know, you don't know. You just have to eat in faith. That's why we pray before we eat. You know, bless the food. May you bring health to our body, not hinder us, and our health and our well-being. So thanks for joining us. It's a very short reading today, and Eric's gone, so we can't blog, do a uh, uh, talk blog with you, and uh, it would have been nice interesting scriptures we read worth talking about but oh well various religious groups um i have friends that belong to a religious group that they soak their meat for days and make sure there's no blood it's almost white before they cook it and make sure there's no blood in it because of the scriptures that says don't eat blood and um i it made me conscious of the fact that even meat um, that's been butchered and hung, if you leave it on the counter long enough, blood comes out of it. So I started making sure my meat was thawed and washed at least before I cook it. Because, not that I, um, I'm trying to eat blood, you know, I'm just trying to barbecue my meat. So it's really interesting. You can get into quite a debate and discussion around eating food. And we're not going to do that tonight because my, my comical partner is on the phone. He likes to make jokes about what I, what I fret about. So be blessed. Give thanks to the Lord for every good thing in your life. And he will continue to bless you. 
and uh, find someone else to bless. Do a good deed for someone today. And thanks for joining us. And may the Holy Spirit of God give you wisdom and understanding and bring healing to your situation. Whether it be financial, physical, uh, family problems, whatever it be. Give it unto the Lord and, and rest. Leave it there to rest in his place, in his throne room. And, and uh, just trust the Lord for the outcome. And I will see you tomorrow.